I call the regular meeting of the Central Parish Council, Thursday, November 6, 2008, to order, please. Before we get into our agenda, I'd like to, I've got a note for the chair uh, for the council members. Y'all have all been handed copies of all 24 appeals of the property tax assessments, and I just didn't want you to forget them, bring them with you, review them. Uh, Assessor Michelle has requested that each of you review these carefully. Because uh, our board of review will be Thursday, November 13th, 2008, at 5 o'clock p.m. Any questions, please call Renee. Our invocation tonight, before we get to the invocation, while we're in the invocation, I'd like for everyone to take a minute to reflect on Mr. Roy Katz former human relations uh, person for the parish that passed away this week. And just and take a second to remember Roy. Thank you all. Tonight our invocation will be led by two young ladies from Ascension Catholic. Would you all come forward please? We have fifth grader Michaela Spano, and we have fourth grader Miss Megan Clack. Thank you very much, ladies. Our pledge tonight will be led by Donaldsonville Council Chairman, Mr. Raymond O'Quinn. Gentlemen, thank you for this privilege. Yes, sir. Pledge allegiance yes. to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Ms. Suzanne, roll call. Please take note, all present with the exception of Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Councilman Chris Lohr will be running a little late. He's not, he's not here. Kent and Councilman Kent shakes not I'm sorry. Item three, we have no chair additions. Our public comment period, please sign in with Ms. Suzanne for any item on the agenda. Now is the time to do it. You will be allotted your three minutes. <laughs> item five, presentations. Ms. Amy, would you come forward, please? Amy Johnson, please come forward. First proclamation is BASF guys my site day. Uh, they've had they're gonna have two occasions. I went to the first occasion uh, at the homeless house, and uh, I think uh, Councilman Bell is gonna take my place on the 14th and present this to them. Uh, it says whereas this year 2008 marks the 50th anniversary of BASF guys my site being an integral part of the pa Ascension Parish community and more than 1,000 citizens, many of them residents of Ascension Parish, 
or employed at BSF's Gosma site, and BSF Gosma site pays more than $100 million in annual wages and spends more than $65 million per year in Louisiana. And whereas BASF's Gosma site generates more than $14 million a year in taxes for the state of Louisiana, Ascension Parish, and the city of Gonzales, and whereas BASF has been an exemplary corporate citizen by contributing in many ways to making our community better, including participation in numerous volunteer projects by employees, retirees, and contractors. Now, therefore, it be proclaimed I, Tommy Martin, as president of the Parish of Ascension, the state of Louisiana, by virtue of the authority vested in me to hear on proclaim September 26, 2008 at BSF Guide Site Day in Ascension Parish and urge my fellow citizens to observe this uh, day. So we're going to, Pat's going to present this. Okay, sir. Let me go. Uh, the other is BSF, uh, let's see, recognition Eagle Scout uh, Bryce Paul Silvio. Mr. Silvio. It says a certificate of achievement. <clears throat> this certificate is hereby awarded to Bryce Paul Silvio, Boy Scout Troop 478. The Parish of Ascension is proud to present this certificate to Bryce Paul Silvio in honor of his attaining the rank of Eagle Scout. Congratulations and keep up the good work. Thank you, Paul. Stay up here, Pat. Okay, sir. Uh, item six, we'll go straight into the parish president report, Hurricane Gustav. Yeah, I rode around on uh, West Bank today with Mr. Gordon Nelson. Uh, they're going to make uh, another pass here. There's some debris left out on some of the state roads, uh, and they're also going to pick up the construction material. We're going to make that same trip uh, next week on the East Bank. And uh, the other thing is we... We were asked to have representatives from the state uh, for the Bayou Lafouche uh, Levy District, uh, Freshwater District, and we have a group here tonight representing them to give us a report on the uh, dredging. And so, um, if Mr. President, I mean Mr. Chairman, you don't mind if I ask Mr. President something on yep. the debris? Are you finished with the debris? President, well, we're going to set a date. Hopefully, by the end of the month, the way it'll be, we're going to, it's going to be over. Okay, we're going to set a, a firm date because people keep bringing it to the road, bringing it to the road. But yes, sir, go ahead. And, and my, my one question is, and I know we have, we was in a meeting with this here, but I think that uh, going on public property, mm -hmm. we have not solved that problem yet, correct? Not as of yet. We have never got the uh, authority to do so, and never been approved. Uh, unless Cedric heard something today, I hadn't talked to him. Nothing. Okay. So, so that date there may we will never know. I won't say never. We don't know at this time, and that may be another couple of weeks. Well, I would hope so. If not, everybody's gonna move and burn it themselves. If it's right, well, going Mr. the way President, it is. That's yes. where that's where I'm going with that. Yes. Well, I mean, if, if yes. the federal we government see we, we can we, do it. On them, uh, Mr. Grant. You want to maybe give an update to where we're at and what uh, dialogue you've had. We've been in, in conversations with FEMA on, on this as, as you're part of one of the discussions. Uh, we have initially had to provide some additional information to them, which we will be sending out by Monday. Um, should we be successful in getting this done, which I don't envision happening before the end of the month, quite honestly, the approval. Once the approval happens, then we have to then institute a process of getting rights of entry from all, all of the folks that would be eligible which I think could take another couple of months. Uh, this is going to be a long process if we are successful in doing it. Uh, we are, are the first parish to have applied. There are 15 other parishes that have applied. None have been granted at this point. 
And Mr. Creighton, exactly what I want to know. I mean, I've been getting phone calls, and I know time, and I don't know if anybody else, but I've been getting a lot of them on my side. When are we going to be able to come on private property? They heard us a couple of months saying we may get that, but now we are running into some problem with it. So it's going to take a little, a little bit. Correct. Longer. I think FEMA's trying to discourage us in a way. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, two board members from the Bayou Lafouche Freshwater District from us. Three. Okay. Well, I know Gene Harrell and. Uh, stand up, please, and Mr. Larry Duga. And from Assumption, we have Mr. Donald Arsenault. And Mr. Arsenault is from Assumption. But from Ascension, our two representatives are Mr. Gene Harrell and Mr. Larry Duga. Mr. Gene is my appointment. Uh, Mr. Larry Duga is uh, appointed by the legislator from this area. Mm. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I'd also like to introduce Jerome Zarang. He's with the Governor's Office of Coastal Activities. Uh, as you all, all know, Bay Lafouche suffered uh, during Hurricane Gustav. According to one DEQ official, he's never seen it this bad. Uh, the storm caused a basic inversion on the bayou, uh, something that's seen on uh, mainly enclosed lakes or water bodies. Uh, that in turn affected all the water system with the exception of peoples up here in Donaldsonville. Uh, Assumption, the city of Thibodeau and Lafouche Parish, even Terrebonne Parish, uh, water supply was uh, degraded to the point where boil orders were issued and it was a severe health problem. Uh, in response to that, uh, we started uh, pumping uh, with our two diesel backup pumps. Uh, when electricity came, did come back on at the station, uh, we initi initiated pumping with the third. Uh, one of the problems we encountered with trying to push more water down the bay was uh, a flooding problem up here in Donaldsonville. And when I talk about flooding, I'm not talking about people's backyards, their wharves coming over in the little gardens, anything like that. I'm talking about water backing up into the, par uh, the city's drainage system. Uh, <coughs> at one point, we had the three major uh, accesses through Donaldsonville closed down. Uh, at the request of the mayor, we backed off the pumping and lowered it back down to a more manageable level. Uh, as of today, that water has cleared up. We still have pockets where we're pumping more than normal uh, down the bayou, uh, try to flush everything out. Good couple of inches of rain would help if uh, y'all got connections in the rain department. <laughs> uh, would really help us out. Uh, as part of the uh, response to the storm and the conditions, uh, the state initiated what they're calling the Emergency Channel Restoration Dredging Project on the Baya. Uh, basically what they did was it accelerated a DNR plan that was in the works to start after the first of the year, where the first 6.2 miles from Donaldsonville to the vicinity of Bell Rose uh, would be dredged out. Uh, we are in the process now of working on a cooperative endeavor agreement that we would take it over with the financial and legal backing of the state. Uh, we are also working with the engineers to finalize <coughs> the plans on that. Uh, property letters were sent out, I think, last week, week before last, to some 240 residents along the Bayou. Uh, so if you're receiving calls, that's what that's all about. Uh, if they have any questions, they can call the district. We'll put them in touch with the engineers. Uh, we're also hoping to resume the, uh, the staking, the surveying and staking, where the property owners can actually see where the top of the, the work is going to be in their backyards. That'll give them a better idea. There was a meeting on the, I think, 12th of September uh, here in Donaldsonville where they showed them aerial photo maps. Uh, but these stakes will give them an exact location of where the top of the project is. And when I say the top of the project, I'm not talking the top of the water line. That is the top of the slope, the footprint of the slope uh, for the new water line. And that's basically where we stand right now. Questions? Mr. Chairman. Councilman Joseph. Yes, sir. Um, that information, point of contact and everything, can you provide that information so we can put that on channel 21? So on that project, if anybody have any questions along highway, I mean, along by your food stick and contact you so they can get an up-to-date progress of where they're at, where you're going. Okay. Uh, we have, uh, they can call the district headquarters in Thibodeau. Uh, that number is 985. Sure, I, I can email it to you. Uh, okay. 
Right. All right. And, yeah, and, I can provide all that information. And, and you say uh, the first of the year that you would start some uh, dredging? That was the original project. We're trying to accelerate the other one a little bit faster. Uh, I, I think I'm not exactly sure of the timeline, uh, but hopefully within the next week or two weeks, we should see survey crews out on location uh, placing the, the stakes. Uh, the next process is the clearing and the grubbing. They'll come in and remove all the vegetation, big trees, and that will be followed on by the actual dredge. Okay. And you also, some of the um, property on, along Bayou Fush there are concerned of some of their property on the Bayou um, or there with that letter. They can contact your lawyers or legal of the state to say what rights they have and what they don't have? Yes, sir. We've got it set up where uh, I'll either go talk to them, one of the engineers from the project will go talk to them, one of the engineering contractors will go talk to them, and if necessary, uh, we've been assured by the state that we can bring legal folks down and sit down and talk to them, probably on a one in one basis, uh, and get everything worked out. Thank you. That's all I have. You're welcome. Any more questions? Uh, Mr. I'd like to uh, call Mr. Zarang up and uh, basically explain. Uh, I think they're going by the little water mark of uh, 1804. Is that correct? As, as far as what the boundaries would be? And explain to him a little bit about the cooperative and Devon agreement. I think that's going to put the project in the hands of the Bayou Lafouche Freshwater <coughs> District. So if you want to. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Parish President. My name is Jerome Zerang. I'm with the Governor's Office of Coastal Activity. And again, I, I want to applaud the efforts of the Bay Lafouche Freshwater District. Obviously, they have a huge responsibility and very limited funding. And this was a critical issue, as uh, Archie indicated, after the storm that had a significant impact far reaching way down into Law Lafouche Parish, which affected the drinking water of over 300,000 citizens, which is critical, of which this water source provides. The intent is to obviously minimize the impacts to the landowners, and the intent is, is to uh, try to reestablish the channel. And, and the Lafouche, uh, Lafouche Freshwater District uh, will initiate the project to improve the channel so that it can function better, so these problems won't continue to happen. I mean, this was an emergency that uh, happened after the storm, but it's an emergency that could, this inversion that Archie mentioned, could happen after a uh, thunderstorm, significant thunderstorm. And it can, it's a problem that will continue to um, cause some serious concern to the people who utilize this, this freshwater source. So uh, we stand in support of the Bay Lafouche Freshwater District to ensure that the funding, the technical expertise are there, and uh, in terms of uh, making sure that the impacts to the landowners are minimal, but they're fairly compensated for those that are impacted. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any, Councilman Jules? No, I'm any, fine. Any, any questions? Thank you, Mr. Zorin. It, one more thing, Mr. Bell. Um, yes, sir. I think Mr. Martin has discussed the uh, intergovernmental agreement. Yes. Uh, we talked to, I talked before um, I left Baton Rouge to come to the meeting with our legal staff, and they have the final draft. We hope to provide it to the Bayou Lafouche Freshwater District no later than Monday, but we're hoping we'll have it in their hands tomorrow. And as Archie said, we hope to get the, uh, once that's executed, we can move forward with getting the survey crews and getting that project started, hopefully by next week. Excellent. Right. Now we're going to be working together with the Bayou Lafouche. Support them in their efforts. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I think it's a $20 million project, and uh, basically, you know, we just want to make sure, make sure that the citizens of Ascension Parish are treated fairly when they do the negotiating on the property. Uh, it's something that's needed. Uh, the value is silted up, and, uh, you know, if you have a heavy rain, as was stated, uh, you have flooding problems. But by dredging it out, the water just goes smooth and hopefully get down to buy you a lot quicker and avoid what happened this time. Mm -hmm. So with that, I, I want to thank everybody from, uh, for coming out tonight. I appreciate the efforts, and uh, hopefully you can keep us updated if, when things, uh, once the cooperative endeavors uh, signed, if, if you could, maybe we have our meetings here the first Thursday uh, of every month, and you can give us a little update, maybe get Gene to give us an update, or Larry, uh, and, and that way we can stay informed if we need to stay to anyone else, Mr. Chaff, on the company, to give you a call. So we appreciate your, your efforts and thanks for coming tonight. Okay. Okay. Uh, and tonight, uh, it's, it's my honor also to ask you uh, to appoint 
Mr. Ronnie Fairchild uh, permanently as Public Works Director. I offer that motion. Second. second. A motion by Councilman Thompson, second by Councilman Cullen. Any discussion? Any objection? Mr. Fairchild is ratified. Mr. Fairchild, you want to say a few words? Fat child is kind of shy when it comes to TV. Man, a few words, but gets the job done. That's so. right. Congratulations, Ronnie. I think that's uh, all I have, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Move into item seven, consent agenda, items A through M. Please review them, and I'll need a motion to approve, please. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Moved by Councilman Todd Lambert. Second. Second by Councilman Randy Cluard. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion approved. General business, Mr. George DA, purchasing please. Good evening, Council. No. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President. Uh, I have two bids to present you with tonight. Uh, the first one was for 22 self-contained breathing apparatus. On October the 15th, 2008, the Purchase Department received two bids for the SCBA. <clears throat> the bids were received from Fire Belong Fire Apparatus and Ferrera Fire Apparatus Incorporated. After reviewing, the Purchase Department in Fire District Number 2 rejects the low quote uh, from Fire Belong Fire Apparatus for cause and recommends accepting the lowest qualifying bid from Ferrera Fire Apparatus. And I believe you all have that information in your packet as to why we did that. I'll make a motion on that. Got a motion by Councilman Johnson. Got a second by Councilman Randy Claude. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, the second was some on site emergency generators um, 50 kW for Sorrento Fire Department and 100 kW for the new 7th District Volunteer Fire Department. On October the 15th, 2008, the Purchase Department received two bids for the emergency generators. The bids were received from Carson Equipment and from Arco Company Services. After reviewing the purchase, the purchasing department in Fire District 1 recommends accepting the lowest qualifying bid from Arco Company Services. Second Second motion. motion by Second. Councilman Cluart, second by Councilman Benny Johnson. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. George. <clears throat> Excuse me, item 9. Roberto Macedo and Ms. Martha. Public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the council, President Martinez. This is a public hearing that we're opening up tonight in reference to the closeout of Hillryville, and we would ask that you open the public hearing. Make a motion to open. open. Motion to open by Councilman Thompson. Second. Second by Councilman Cullen. <coughs> Now is the time to come up to speak. Motion to close. Motion to close by Councilman Thompson, Joseph. by Second. Councilman Joseph. Second by Councilman Thompson. Mr. Chairman, would like to Okay, sir. That. Mr. Mercedes. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, Council Members, President. The state requires that a, um, a few highlights about this project be mentioned at the public hearing. Um, after a long wait, I think we're seeing the, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel in this project. But basically what um, the total contract amount, construction contract amount for this project ended up being at $1,762,135.59. With this, of course, we accomplished a sewer system for uh, half of the Hillerville community and entail collection lines uh, pump station and a large treat regional treatment plant. Also, this project has paid for the actual hookup of 39 families that qualified based on income. Um, the next step, once the uh, lean period has been met with a contractor and all the punch list items and everything has been completed, a closeout report will be submitted <coughs> to the state, and then we will receive a final closeout for this project. Okay, sir. Yeah. Councilman Valentine. Thank you, Mr. Mercedes. Mercedes, we, we're going to need to um, 
make a motion to close out this or yes? No, it's basically this basically is a, it's it's public hearing. It's a public hearing, open it. <coughs> if anybody has any comments from the public as to. Well, we thank you for your service. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item 10, I have Ms. Catherine Goffett, please. Introduction of an ordinance amending the 2008 budget and appropriating the 2009 budget. Good evening and thank you. Uh, Finance President Martinez and Mr. Grant, uh, you were very gracious in answering my questions. I thank you. The 08 budget was 107 million. With amendments that are being presented, you are spending 12 million more or 119 million. The outstanding parish debt is almost 88 million. In 07, actual salaries and benefits were almost 15 million. In 08, 17.8 million. In 09, 21 million is budgeted. There are 30 additional personnel listings. Some are justifiable. If you are not planning on filling all of them, why budget them? Here's one place I believe you can trim the budget. Capital projects in 09 decreased 18 million over 08. If this decrease is subtracted from the 107 million, it would put 09 expenditures at 89 million. You have 92.4 million, up 3 million. Revenues in 09 are projected to be up almost 8 million over 08. I question the claim that this is a slimmer budget. With the defeat of the tax proposition, you can save most of the $422,500 budgeted for Lamar by terminating the lease immediately with a 90-day prior written notice. I have that page in the, to give you in a moment. Revenues in 09 are projected, excuse me, on page 17 of the lease. Use the money on the people's express priorities in the recent recreation survey, which you will talk about shortly. $750,000 for upgrading existing parks has been budgeted. This is good. This is being transferred out of the Ascension Parish Insurance Fund. Will this money be returned? Is this related to the 15% increase in insurance premiums for 09? Lighting District 6 will close 09 with almost $1 million in surplus. We've spoken about this before. There is no plan to use this money. It is time to roll back this five mil property tax, return a portion to the people in Pelican Point and industry. You will be the heroes if you do. You're coming next year to ask the public for more money. They might be more receptive. You have $100,000 in the budget for a tax proposition on the ballot next year. 218.5 thousand is budgeted with no listing in capital projects. Departments that do not give you an itemized list prior to November 20th I believe should be removed. Let's not bury the bones. The $100,000 under general administration with no listing is intended to enclose the Sorrento Civic Center for storage space if the tax for Lamar failed, and it has. If you know what the item is, please list it. Thank you, ma'am. Don't, don't, doing otherwise is dishonest. Thank you for your attention. Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, Mr. Mr. Grant. On this item, what we're doing here is introducing the amended 2008 budget and uh, appropriating the budget for 2009. At the special meeting on last week, I went through the details of this with you in, in the general highlights. If there are any particular questions that you have on, on any particular item, I'll be happy to answer them at this time. Moved to any particular budget item. Moved to introduce. Second. All right. Council Valentine moves to introduce. Second by Councilman Thompson. Any discussion? Any objection? Ordinance is introduced. Wait, wait. I'm sorry, Councilman. Uh, I just want to commend uh, Mr. Grant and Ms. Kenshin on the job to deal with the budget. Uh, I think y'all did a good job, and uh, I think everybody, the employees, will be happy. And uh, just want to commend you guys. Okay, sir. Councilman Valentine. Just, just remember that um, for the general public, also, they would, the discussion and the public hearing will be at the uh, next meeting in Gonzales on the budget. Okay, item 11, resolution. Ms. Lindsay Manda.
whereas Ascension Parish acts as a conduit for many local agencies to receive grant funding, and whereas Ascension Parish acted as such with regard to radios and other equipment for local law enforcement and emergency responders, whereas these radios and other miscellaneous equipment were erroneously placed on the parish's fixed asset list, whereas upon discovery of the error, the parish finance office removed said radios and other miscellaneous equipment from the parish's fixed asset li list, Wherefore, be it resolved by the Ascension Parish Governing Authority that the action of the Finance Office in removing the attached items from the fixed asset list is hereby ratified. I need a vote. Make a motion. I need a motion. Motion by Councilman Johnson, second, second by Councilman Cluard. Any discussion? Resolution passes. Mrs. Zahn, make note, please, that Councilman Chris Lohr has arrived. <coughs> Item 12, Mr. Jack Watson, please. My name is Jack Watson. I'm with the Vietnam Vets Organization in Gonzales, Chapter 725. I'm here to speak on the behalf of the veterans of Ascension Parish. This is a big day for us. We celebrate it <coughs> with our hearts. We honor those that have gone on before of us and died. We honor those that are fighting right now as we speak. Our soldiers need our support. And to do this, we need to be off to where we can honor those men. There's, there's celebrations going on throughout the state. And I think this would be an admirable program that you folks here adopt to where you would be off to honor our veterans that served, those that have gone on and those that are serving now. With that, I would like to ask you to accept this proposal to have Veterans Day out for Ascension Parish for our veterans. I'd like to make that motion. So a motion second. by Councilman Clewart, second by Councilman Cullen. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Jack, I'd really like to uh, thank you and all of our veteran heroes, thank you for your service, sir. We appreciate you. That's an honor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. President. I also want to thank you uh, for your vote here, but I'd like to, to see Veterans Day made a permanent holiday in Ascension Parish. Uh, I just thank the veterans. We owe them that for what they've done for us. and. Uh, I just think we can either take the floating holiday and make it Veterans Day or either whatever, declare whichever you want, but I just think it should be permanently done here. Uh, it's not been done up till now, and Sheriff's Office is off, a lot of the other offices are off, uh, but uh, I'd like you to do that also. I'd like, a mo I'd like to make a motion that we declare the floating holiday as, um, we, as we would declare Veterans Day a holiday in, in place of the floating holiday going forward. We have a motion by Councilman Lohr. Second. Second by Councilman Cullen. Any discussion? Any objection? Veterans Day will be a permanent holiday in place of the floating holiday. <laughs> Item 13. Introduction of an ordinance to amend the mental health ordinance. Ms. Manda. Uh, council members, uh, Mr. Billy Arsimon um, prepared an ordinance for your review and uh, it is enclosed in your packet uh, for mm -hmm. introduction. Okay, sir. I'll motion need a motion to. Motion to Mr. All right, motion introduced by Councilman Todd Lambert. Second. Second by Councilman Oliver Joseph. Any discussion? Any objection? Ordinance is introduced. Next, we will get into our committee report section of the agenda. Recreation Committee, Chairman, Councilman Oliver Joseph. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we, had our, uh, we did a survey um, a couple months ago, and we have Mr. Adrian Percy uh, to give us an update on it, and this is just a brief uh, update about this survey on recreation. Mr. A Percy? brief update, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Uh, I'm Adrian Percy, uh, Percy and Company. We're a market research firm, and we were retained by the parish to conduct a survey of residents regarding what they would like to see happen with the parks and recreation opportunities in Ascension Parish. Uh, to conduct the survey, we decided that going by telephone was not going to give us the same kind of results and accuracy that we would get if we went into each one of the neighborhoods. So what we did, we originally set out to do 400, a sample of 400, but since there were 11 council districts and the population of each council district is pretty equal, we decided to go do, uh, to conduct 40 surveys in each council district for a total sample of 440. Now, one of the reasons doing this door-to-door, -door, drop off and pick up methodology was this survey was actually fairly long. It was four pages, eight and a half by 11, and we went around and went, it took us uh, basically two weekends, all day Saturday and all day Sunday, canvassing this parish to get these surveys completed. But I can tell you that every household we went to where someone opened the door, they were very, very cooperative and very much wanted to participate in the survey. Uh, we, we sat down and lined out the entire parish, maps of the entire parish that were provided by the parish, and, and looked at every single neighborhood. So when we went out, this geographically covered the entire parish and covered both sides of the river. Uh, if you look at a sample of 440 randomly selected households across the parish, the full sample results of this survey should be accurate to plus or minus 4.8 percent at the 95 percent level of confidence, which is a fairly strong survey for a parish like this. Now, when, uh, by the way, the entire results of this survey, I'm just giving you a brief overview for about 10 minutes, but the entire results and the full report is up on the internet right now for the, the parish internet. I think it has been loaded, Thanks. so anybody can download, and I know we dropped off copies for all of the council. Uh, but I want to put this table up. It looks like a lot of numbers right now, but one of the first questions on the survey, have you or your members of your household visit an Ascension Parish Park during the past year? If you notice, roughly two-thirds, 64 percent, have visited a park, and one-third, or 35.8, have not. Yes, now, yes. for every question in the survey, for you council members who have not looked at the report yet, we have broken every question out by council district, and if you look down at the two bottom rows, by East Bank and West Bank. So you can see which districts residents are utilizing the parks in greater numbers than in other districts. Now, we also asked everybody who had, who had not used a park, what are the reasons you haven't visited a park? And it's, and it's real interesting. Lack of knowledge about the programs offered was 41 percent of the people said that was why they haven't used the parks more often, and are the parks are too far away, and are the parks are not well maintained. Now this is, this is more likely to be said on the West Bank than the East Bank. 32% on the West Bank feel that their parks are not well maintained, and West Bank residents are also significantly more likely to claim that their parks are unsafe. We asked, which parks have you used or visited in the last year? And what you see is Jambalaya Park is a number. There are a lot of, a lot of parks listed. By the way, this was purely open-ended where everybody wrote in the parks that they visited. And not living in Ascension Parish, it was tough for us to compress all of these down and identify what, what parks people were actually referring to. Jambalaya Park is obviously the, the most named park for visitation, but then you look at these five or six parks up at the top that are being used a lot, uh, which are Gonzales Park, Santa Ma, Butch Gore. These are the parks with ball fields. These are the parks that have programs going on at the park, and more people would be expected to visit those parks. But just because all of these other parks listed down do not show huge numbers of people going, their neighborhood <coughs> parks and people in every neighborhood were identifying the parks down the street around the corner that they were going to. So the neighborhood parks are getting used, but they're not being used by people across the entire parish, but people localized to those parks. Okay. Now we asked what types of enhancements would you like to see? Now these are all, we gave people overall the first things they wanted to, they identifying the kind of enhancements, and then we had them pick four, 
And what's funny is no matter how we asked the question, they kept coming back with the same things. Walking, jogging trails, cleaner restrooms, more playground equipment, <coughs> nature trails. Another issue that seemed to keep popping up were covered picnic areas, uh, fishing areas, biking trails, and then things start falling off after that. But well, the kinds of things people are wanting have a tendency to go more into neighborhood type parks. We then asked preferred infrastructure and gave them a whole bunch of other things they could answer that they wanted to see happen in the parks. And guess what? They came back and said the exact same things. Walking trails, cleaner restrooms, more playground equipment, nature trails, again, covered picnic areas, fishing areas. No matter how we asked the questions, no matter how we gave people the opportunity to respond, they kept coming back and saying the same kinds of things. Now, by the way, these are all broken out, East Bank, West Bank, and full sample. But for each one of your council districts, we have, the li we have all of the data from your council district broken out so you can see how your constituents uh, responded to these questions. But again, walking, jogging paths, water parks, picnic facilities, and then swimming pools were pretty much consistent across the board, East and West Bank. All right. We defined three different kinds of parks. Uh, one was a neighborhood park. The second would be a community park, which would have a few more kinds of amenities provided. And then the third was a regional park, which was a much larger park, which provided oh, many, many, many more things. And we said, what, are, what is most important to you of these three? And pretty much overwhelmingly, the most important was a neighborhood park, followed as second most important, a community park, and the least important was regional park. Now, I will say this. When we broke these things out, people would like to see neighborhood, community, and regional parks contained in the, you know, provided by the parish. But when given a choice, neighborhood parks were more important than either community or regional. We then asked, what kinds of things would you like to see in a regional park? And, uh, and basically, the, uh, the same things came out. Jogging, walking, running trails or <laughs> something everybody would like to see. Playgrounds, swimming, fairs, festivals, picnicking. All of these things were identified by over 50% of the sample as things they would like to see in the parks. Uh, splash parks, biking, baseball, softball, hiking. All of these same kinds of activities kept coming up, no matter how, again, no matter how we asked. Now, this next table, which is, looks like a long one, but I really want y'all, if y'all have a moment, to take a minute and look at it. Support for improvements. How supported would you be of, part of uh, Ascension Parks taking the following actions to improve recreational opportunities for Ascension Parish residents? And we have rank ordered these according to the responses. <laughs> The number one thing people in this parish would like to see, and this was pretty much across the board, 70% of the people would be very supportive of, first thing, upgrading existing parks. Then the next, developing walking, jogging, biking trails. Third, upgrading existing youth and adult athletic fields. Purchasing more land for community parks. Developing more areas for family and group events. Purchasing land for neighborhood parks developing summer day camp programs, improving parking lots, developing fishing areas, and then number 10th on the list is purchasing land and developing a regional sports complex, that larger park. When, it come, when push comes to shove and it comes down to it, people want things in their neighborhood, they want things in their immediate community. All right, next slide, please. We then asked them, and this, was, we had, and this was a very interesting question. We asked everybody, given $100 for the parks, how would you like to see it divided? And they had to add it up to 100 and we've averaged out all their responses. And almost 40%, $38 of that 100 overwhelmingly, and by the way, East Bank, West Bank, and full sample, the numbers are almost identical in, all, in, in the, the, the two major regions. Improvements and maintenance of existing parks was number one uh, where they would like to see 40% of the money going. A quarter of the money they'd like to see developing new park activities and programs. 
and then $21 acquisition of new park land and open space, and then $16, the lowest number in all areas, was development of a regional sports complex. We then, well, by th this, by the way, the, uh, let me, support for additional funding. Ascension spends much less than what some surrounding parishes spend per person on recreational opportunities for citizens. For example, Ascension Parish spends one-sixth, about 17% of what EBR spends, and less than one-half of what Terrebonne Parish spends per person on recreation. How much more would you be willing to spend per month to fund improvements to Ascension Parks? And we have this broken out by every council district, full sample, and again, East and West Bank, a lot of numbers up there. But the three you need to look at are up in the upper far right, full sample across the board, six to ten dollars, eleven to fifteen, and sixteen dollars or more. If you just take six dollars a month, you have fifty-five percent of the parish saying they would be willing to spend six dollars or more per month which if you multiply that out, basically saying most of the parish, 55% of the parish said they would be willing to spend $75 more a year in order to develop more neighborhood and community parks. Again, there's a lot in the report, a lot in the report. It's broken out demographically and it's also broken out geographically and within each one of your council districts. And there are a lot of questions and a number of other issues that we're not presenting here. But after we compress everything down, oh, excuse me, one more. Uh, basically, we asked, would you, how willing would you be to vote in favor of fund, additional funding for the parks? And again, we get the majority of the parish saying they would vote yes. I will say this, given the results of an election uh, Tuesday, that these questions were asked in August. They were asked before the most recent election, and they were also asked prior to the somewhat exaggerated downturn in the economy that's happened over the last few months and hesitation. So, you know, again, this was a snapshot in time when we asked everybody in August, but the majority of the people were in fact in favor at that time. Uh, when we compress all of this down, we come down to basically several recommendations. And I can't stress enough that each of you review this report and, and, and compare your council districts, look at what your constituents are saying and what they want. They're actually quite consistent across council districts and across the entire parish. I would then recommend to move the parks forward, organizing for a strategic planning process and developing a solid plan on how you intend to address improvements in the parks and what you look to do over the long term. I would then, I cannot, I, it, every time this has come up in other parishes, the, 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 the process that puts the support over the top with the citizens is having the town buildings, meetings, building support and understanding for the plan. Letting the citizens, they've given us input, but it was only 440 people that gave us input. I can't stress enough having the town meetings, let, giving people the opportunity to give the input, build understanding, build support, and then try to figure out how to fund it. Are there any questions? Do we have a copy of this? No, sir. Uh, I <clears throat> want to thank you for the opportunity to do this. I hope this is an assistance to the parish to move forward and deliver the parks to the people that they, they have said they want. Yes, sir. Thank you for your report. Very thank good. You. Councilman Joseph? Yes, I want to thank Mr. Percy Company. Um, they did a fine job, and that's one of the things I have to go back to the Recreation Committee. We had seen in the past before I got on this council that we had numerous uh, master plans, but they were never fed to the public to, to finish it. And this survey proved that this is what the public want, and the uh, Recreation Committee is committed, committed to uh, finish this here. We are next phase is to come up with a master plan that the public can see and vote on, you know, and get their input on before we can look at the funding process. And once again, I have to give the uh, administration, they did put some additional funds into 
the budget basic for the first uh, three priorities. They would like to see uh, cleaner parks and they would like to see them repaired, mm -hmm. you know. And also they would like to have some additional playground equipment. And I hope that re we re Restrooms and picnic areas. <laughs> you know, so we, we hope we can use those funds this year for exactly that, for what the public is asking for. Mm -hmm. So once again, I want to thank you. Okay, Councilman Lohr. Well, <coughs> Councilman Joseph, uh, mentioned it, but I just want to echo it too. The uh, additional funds, the 750000 that administration um, placed in the budget that we're um, going to vote on, I, I'd, I'd hope we keep that. I think it's extremely important, as, as you can see from the survey. I mean, that just validates that. And uh, it's long past due, and maybe one day we can find a way to to incorporate that and bump that, you know, make that more permanent. But, uh, you know, upgrading parks, uh, that's what that fund is, that, that additional 750 is to be used for, and that's, that's what we need. So. <coughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Next, we go to item 15, personnel committee meeting. Chairman Benny Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Personnel committee met and interviewed folks for some boards. Uh, we'd like to make a recommendation for uh, Mr. Billy Barriant to be uh, appointed to the Central Consolidated Utilities District Number One. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Valentine, second by Councilman Todd Lambert. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion carries. Also, like to have Mr. Oliver Hooper Jr. appointed to that consolidated utilities district. So moved. Moved by Councilman Dennis Cullen, second, second by Councilman Chris Lohr. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion carries. And the last person to the ACUD number one board, Mr. Harry Thibodeau. So moved. Moved, moved by Councilman. Cluart, second by Councilman Valentine. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion carries. For the uh, Ascension Parish Human Resources Review Board, the first appointment would, uh, we recommend is Mr. Paul Goodwin. So moved. Moved by Councilman Joseph, second by Councilman Valentine. Any objection? Any discussion? Any objection? Motion carries. The next appointment to that board would be Ms. Teresa Clack. So moved. Moved by Councilman Valentine, second, second by Councilman Joseph. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion carries. The last appointment for that board would be Mr. Devin Decato. I move. Moved by Councilman Valentine, second by Councilman Cluart. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion carries. The last board for appointments we have for tonight, Mr. Chairman, for the Central Parish Waterways Commission, the first appointment, Mr. Will Rieger. So moved. Moved by Councilman Joseph, second by Councilman Cluart. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion carries. And the last appointment would be Mr. Bo Mathern. Motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Councilman Todd Lambert, second by Councilman Dennis Cullen. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion carries. That concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We'll move into our public hearing ordinance section. Ms. Lindsay Manda, item 16. Ordinance to revoke the public servitude shown on that certain tract or parcel of land designated as Lot 4 as shown on the map entitled Map Showing Survey and Resubdivision of Lot 4 into Lot 4 and Tract A1B1, Gerald DuVernay Subdivision located in Section 17, Township 9 South, Range 3 East, Parish of Ascension, Louisiana into Lot 4A for Stephen Bateman and Tract A1B1 for <coughs> Gerald Gotro property. Be ordained by the Ascension Parish Council as the governing authority for the Parish of Ascension, State of Louisiana, in lawful session, hereby revokes that public servitude designated as existing 15-foot servitude, as shown on map of survey entitled Map Showing Resubdivision of Lot 4, Duvernay Subdiv Subdivision and Tract A1B1, Gerald Gotro Property, located in Section 17, Township 9 South, Range 3 East, Parish of Ascension, Louisiana, into Lot 4A and Tract A1B1 for Stephen Bateman. Prepared by Curtis M. Cheney, Registered Professional land, land Surveyor, with a stipulation to provide a new permanent 15-foot servitude dedicated along the east side of Lot 4A and along the south side of new Lot 4A until it intersects with the existing 15-foot servitude along the east side of adjacent Lot 3. All other public servitudes, as may affect the subject property, are hereby reserved. Move to open public hearing. Council. A motion to open by Councilman Valentine, second by Councilman Todd Lambert. At this time, anyone wishing to speak on this matter, please come forward. Move to close. Move to close by Councilman Valentine, second by Councilman Todd Lambert. 
Move the ordinance. Second. Got a motion by Councilman Valentine to move the ordinance. Second by Councilman Todd Lambert. Any discussion? Any objection? Ordinance is introduced. Excuse me, ordinance passes. I'm sorry. The next ordinance. Purpose, to revoke the 12-foot utility servitude running 20 feet along either side of the center line of an existing 40-foot private servitude of passage, as shown on a map entitled, Map Showing Resubdivision of Track 7A1A and Track 7A1B of the Samuel W. Flint property into 7A1A1 and 7A1B1 for Samuel Flint by Lester A. McLenn, Jr., PLS, dated 6-18-2008. Be it ordained by the Ascension Parish Council as the governing authority for the Parish of Ascension, State of Louisiana, in lawful session, hereby revokes the 12-foot servitude running along either side of the center line of the 40-foot private servitude of passage, located on tracks 7A1A1 and 7A1B1 of the aforementioned property, provided that the existing gravel drive within the servitude is not a dedicated public roadway. All other public servitudes affecting said property are hereby reserved. A motion open. Motion, motion open. open by Councilman Todd Lambert. Second, Second by Councilman Cluart. Anyone wishing to speak on this matter, please come forward. Motion to close. Motion to close by Councilman Johnson. Second by Councilman Cluart. Motion to uh, motion for the ordinance. So moved. Moved by Councilman Todd Lambert. Second. Second by Councilman Chris Lohr. Any discussion? Any objection? Ordinance passes. Councilman Lambert. <laughs> motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Second, second by Councilman. Motion to adjourn by Councilman Lambert, second by Councilman Cluart. <laughs>